South Carolina Football Hall of Fame, uh, what, what's that mean? Uh, it's a big honor, big honor. This is uh, a day for the Gamecocks. Uh, really uh, thrilled that uh, Mike Foster, the Hall of Fame here, uh, sat and put me in. And uh, really looking forward to tonight. Saying a few good words about South Carolina and uh, what a wonderful experience it was for me and my family. Steve. Steve, when you think back to your time in South Carolina, what's the first thing that comes to mind? What, what, what's maybe the first memory or a few of the first memories that come to mind? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is I, I thought we could win an SEC. That was the disappointment. And we had four teams there between 10 and 13 that uh, you know, really had a chance. And we, you know, we won 11 games, but we didn't win the division uh, those years, even though we beat the division champ. Georgia, Missouri, uh, took two of those three years. But anyway, uh, but other than that, uh, you know, finished in the top 10, winning 11 games, uh, being relevant in college football. That's, uh, uh, people knew about South Carolina football for at least a, a four or five year period. What do you remember about Shane Beamer when he was there the first time with you? Well, Shane was special team coordinator. Yep. And uh, I guess he had title recruiting coordinator for a while. Uh, but recruiting, uh, you know, every coach recruits his position, basically. And uh, everybody recruits uh, pretty much everybody. Some, someone once asked me who recruited Clowney. I said, Marcus Lattimore and Stefan Gilmore recruited Clowney. I got him to come to a basketball game, uh, Genevion and his parents. And Stefan sat on one side and Marcus the other side. And, uh, students found out Clowney was at the basketball game, started chanting, we want Clowney, and uh, he was ready to come after that. Steve, what does it mean to you after all these years? I mean, I know just, yeah. just a couple weeks ago at George's event, you saw all the Gage Fox fans coming up to you to show them so much love to you. What does that mean to you to be able to still have that love after so many years? Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate the game, Cox. And uh, I watched him 10 years here yes. and uh, in a few games. But uh, it, it seems like every time I go to Columbia, uh, people recognize me. And sometimes I need to be quiet because they recognize my voice also. I got a voice and it's just a little different, I guess. But uh, anyway, now we have some wonderful times here. We really did. One bunch of ball games. And, uh, we played Florida, Georgia, and, and Tennessee even. We're five and five against them. Uh, those 10 years and uh, so we uh, we were a good team good team I wish we could have won an SEC though and how often do you think about just like I mean the, the sheer amount of success that you had at South Carolina that you doing something that no one else has done before I guess I think more about the losses that uh, we should have could have would have won and uh, we didn't do and uh, certainly had our share of those in uh, 2014 uh, but in hindsight, what we were able to do, I guess, is pretty good. But uh, we had a lot of help along the way. Had a lot of good players, coaches, uh, so many people responsible for, for that uh, 10 through 13 and 14 seasons. So, uh, you know, I think the only thing we proved, South Carolina can be relevant in college football. We can be a top 10 program. It's not easy, I guess, but uh, it is possible. So hopefully Shane Beamer and these guys can, can get us there. Steve, you mentioned the SEC. I have to ask you with the reports earlier this week about potentially Texas and Oklahoma looking to go into the SEC. What are your initial thoughts on that? I think somebody just started that rumor on Wednesday or Thursday <laughs> just to shake up SEC media. Uh, they can't find out who said it, but uh, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know why they would want to because – uh, like somebody said, Oklahoma gets in that Final Four, went in the, the Big 12 every year. And uh, I believe I'd, I'd stay there and keep winning that Big 12. Uh, I guess the money would be a huge difference. But I don't know. I, I think I would like to keep playing the teams I've played in the history of the program instead of jumping around for more money. But I don't know. That's, that's, that's up to them. Steve, obviously Connor Shaw was a guy. Connor Shaw was a guy who's had made, made a big impact during your oh, time. Well, to have got, him, let me tell you something. We got Stephon Gilmore and then Connor Shaw and Lattimore, and they all came that year. And then Clowney and a bunch of other guys came after that. It just uh, we we had the leadership within the team also. And Connor uh, winning his quarterback, never lost a home game. Uh, he was he was crucial. And Dylan Thompson played very well also. Connor had some little injuries here and there, and Dylan came in. 
Uh, I remember the night up here in the upstate, uh, Dylan beat Clemson in that 2012 game. And I don't think he played in about five or six weeks, but uh, that, that had an excellent, excellent game. To have Connor here tonight as well, just what does that yeah. mean? And, and what do you remember about maybe? Well, yeah, I asked Connor to introduce me to be my presenter, and he said, love to, coach. So, uh, yeah, he'll be uh, he'll be here tonight. Do you remember recruiting him or get maybe the first time he came across his film or anything like that? Well, I knew we were recruiting him. He was not like Lattimore and Clowney and these guys, uh, but he uh, he had some choices. Uh, but we really liked him. We liked him because he loved to compete. Uh, you know, he's not six four and some of those kind of guys. Uh, and he can run with the ball and he can make plays. Uh, and he's like I said, he's a competitor. He, he doesn't like losing. And when you got a quarterback like that, it spreads uh, throughout the team. So uh, yeah, Connor's a big reason we had that spurt between uh, eleven and thirteen. You, you talked about seeing this picture yet? Sure. Yeah, somebody showed me that, and uh, I don't know if it was who, who put it together. You know, I, I'm not sure, but I think it was uh, I think it was Beamer's idea. Oh, it was. Okay, that was uh, that might have been the last year I was there. Uh, did Clowney take the picture of me? I think, I think yeah. he did. Somebody said. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, people always ask me how did Clowney do? What kind of player was he? I said, let me tell you what. He played three years, and we were eleven and two every year. So that, that tells you how good a player he was. What are, your, what are your thoughts on the new uh, name, image, and likeness rule that's been put into place, and how do you think that would have affected your locker room with being still coaching? Uh, I sort of think it will work its way out. I sort of think the same teams that are winning now will keep winning unless something different happens. Uh, but it is uh, the wave of the future. It's, uh, uh, you know, I was the guy that sort of went to the meetings and said, we need to give our players about three or $400 a game. And they said, you're crazy, we, we'll never do that. And I said, yeah, we will someday. So we got that cost of attendance going where they got 3,500, 4,000 a year. And then all of a sudden they said, wait a minute, why can't we endorse things? Why is this coach making five to seven million and I'm making 300 bucks a week? <laughs> Something's got to give here. So uh, players are entitled to a lot more. They are entitled to it. And hopefully it'll work out to uh, where it won't create too much animosity, one guy getting a lot more than the other. Uh, but I think it'll work its way out. Like somebody said, NFL, sometimes these quarterbacks make 30 million a year, and they don't play worth the crap, some of them. <laughs> but uh, they're supposed to, I guess. So uh, anyway, it's sort of life. Everybody doesn't make the same money. Steve, you mentioned winning a lot of games in your time in South Carolina. I'm curious, outside of just players, what is the blueprint to winning football games in South Carolina? Well, first of all, yeah, I'll give you Nick Saban's blueprint. Somebody asked me why he went all the time. I said, well, first of all, he said the number one recruit class, 12 out of 15. Yeah. Okay, so he's got the best players. All right. Second, uh, they have, uh, I think, the best assistant coaches, and it starts with him. They, they got the best coaching staff. Uh, you don't see their players opt out before bowl games or anything, and you don't see them mouth off and do that stuff. Uh, they play the way that the game's supposed to be played. Alabama football is clean and fair, and they do it the right way. And, uh, and then the third thing is, uh, you know, the attitude and the leadership amongst the players. They, uh, the older guys take over, and you know, I heard him say, you know, it's a new group of guys this year that, that's got to take that leadership role. So they've got it going. And, um, you know, he loses a lot of coaches every year. And then he'll lose players, but that number one recruit class is getting ready to go. So, uh, and Dabo Sweeney does a lot of the same thing. His guys usually play the, you know, the four years and so forth. So a lot of similar similarities, I think, in what Dabo does and what Nick Saban does. And with the Arby's photo that Shane took, kind of making this round, can you give the backstory to that? Did, was that Arby's trip your idea? Or did Clowney take that photo and you knew it was happening? We, we stopped there and got a bite. Steve Fink's here. He's the guy yeah. that uh, <laughs> we'd get a sandwich on the way back, uh, jumped on the airplane and come back. Mm -hmm. I don't know, somebody, we'd taken our ties off a little bit yeah. and so forth. And uh, Clowney took that picture, correct? Somebody told me. And spread it around back then. So I guess Beamer said, 
That's a tradition. <laughs> I don't know. Do you feel honored that it's a tradition that you started oh, with the it's, Arby thing? No big deal. <laughs> 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 I do that a lot to, the, to people, so that's no big deal. Steven, I think you were in your second year at Florida when Arkansas and South Carolina joined the league. Yeah. Do, what do you kind of remember about that and, and those discussions, and what do you remember about you know I'm, adding to I it? I know they almost beat us that first year, the 92 year. In fact, uh, I think they had the fullback in the flat that dropped a pass, and we won 14 to 9. Y'all remember that game? Anybody? <laughs> That's what happened. Uh, it was a tight game. And then uh, in, uh, let's see, 2000, uh, last year we won the SEC. Uh, they had us 21 to 3 in the swamp. And we threw a hitch pass, and a guy had picked to make it 28 to 3, and he dropped it. And then we went and scored, and the whole thing turned around. So what was happening, South Carolina just some bad stuff. And when I got here, remember somebody said, what are you going to do about the curse? I said, what curse are we talking about? So people had sort of spread the word about a curse in South Carolina football. So obviously we, we had to forget about all that, not talk about it, and try to stay positive. So we we didn't have bad things like that happen to us. Coach, with the recent news of Bobby Bowden, what can you talk about those? Yeah, things? Coach Bowden, a uh, wonderful coach. You know, he's the second all-time winner college football game, Joe Paterno was the leader, and uh, I, I really admired Joe Paterno. I could talk about him. What happened to him was completely wrong, in my opinion, and should not have happened, and um, that's another story. Uh, but Coach Bowden uh, coached a long time there. He made FSU football what it was. Uh, I was in Florida 12 years. 11 of those years, they were in the top four in the nation. 11 out of 12 years, and we had to play them the last game of the season. I used to say, how come uh, Tennessee doesn't have to play these dudes the last game of the season like we have to? But uh, that's just the way it was. Uh, college scheduling is uh, it's not always fair. Uh, but winning the conference championship, if you win your division, you know, that gives you a fair shot to, uh, to maybe beat the team on the other side. But anyway, uh, Coach Bowden, a yeah, wonderful guy, a good Christian man. And uh, he's 92, he's had a wonderful life. Uh, but we always hate to hate to hate to see a guy like that pass away. What was so hard about playing against Coach Bowden? What what, what is it about his teams that made them so good? Well, they usually out recruited us down there. Uh, they uh, they were top three or four in the country every year in recruiting. Uh, he, he he had a bunch of players. They all went to the NFL. And, uh, they enjoyed playing there at FSU. Uh, they were independent for a long time and then joined the ACC. I think they won that conference about 14 years in a row and, and nobody hardly paid any attention to him. So uh, I think Dabo's trying to catch his records <laughs> down there right now. Uh, but anyway, now they had good players, good coaches, and uh, they, yeah, they were tough to beat. The current transfer rules were in place when you were in that 11 win season. Yeah. Would that have changed the way that you added players going to transfer versus recruiting out of high school? Yeah, we'd probably do it about like all the schools are doing it. Uh, they got coaches that uh, recruit other schools or keep in contact with all the players and uh, the coaches. And uh, I guess they have a transfer portal section over here, office and recruiting office. And uh, I think just a lot more people involved. Uh, I think it's good for a lot of young men to be able to transfer, uh, but probably half of them should not transfer. Half of them should probably stay and tough it out and uh, wait for their turn to play and try to graduate. And, you know, these kids go on the portal, nobody picks them up. They can't come back to their school. They're off scholarship and now where are they going? So, uh, you know, we don't hear the stories about those young men, but uh, I, I, I think there shouldn't be quite as many. I think it should be okay to transfer, but it's, it's way too many, I think. I want to get your thoughts on the proposal to expand the college football playoff to 12 teams. Do you think it devalues yeah. home games at all? What, what's your thought yeah. on that entire process? Yeah. I always thought eight would be pretty good, but 12, uh, gosh, that's okay also, I think. You know, basketball has, what, 68? Uh, baseball has 65, 68, something like that, I don't know. And football's only got four? Yeah, come on, we, we need some other guys to play. And plus, it's the same four just about every year. The same five, four of the top five usually. So these other teams need to get in there. Yeah, I thought Cincinnati should have got a little bit better look this year, uh, but they they didn't didn't get a look. 
What do you think about tonight's honor, and what do you think your legacy is going to be here, not only in football but South Carolina football, building what you did and then, and, and making you know building and building on what South Carolina built on in the eighties and going forward? Oh, I just I uh, feel fortunate that that I was able to come coach here. Uh, I thank Mike McGee for hiring me. You know how many job offers I had that year? Somebody said, "How'd you go to South Carolina?" I said, "I had one offer, Mike McGee, South Carolina." I guess back uh, in 2004 and five, if you were almost 60 years old, people thought you were an old dude. But uh, I tell people one of the neatest things I've ever done, I'm the winningest coach, and I won my first game when I was 60. Yeah, if anybody ever does that again, tell me, okay. But uh, but anyway, uh, it, was, it was fun being there, and it was fun doing things that had never been done before. Uh, for some reason, I get a kick out of that. That's why I'm disappointed we still did not win an SEC. I think back the players there <clears throat> during those four years, they could have done it. Uh, we could have coached better, I think, certain games, but it just didn't work out. Uh, but, but other than that, uh, it's history now, and uh, hopefully people will say, hey, South Carolina uh, can be relevant. Uh, we got the stadium, we got the crowd, uh, the fans. The Gator fans and the Gamecock fans are the two best in America. Y'all could have been there together. So anyway, uh, they, they, uh, they deserve a, a championship. They deserve the SEC in South Carolina. Their fans do. Steve, and hopefully their coaches and players can put it together. Yeah. Steve, you mentioned, you mentioned coaching starting in South Carolina at, at 60. You know, yeah. you got guys like Mac Brown who are a little bit older yeah. taking over. What was it, you know, when you were at that age and, and going, you know, what was it that kept you going and kept you motivated and, and kept you, you know, sharp? Well, sometimes your plans in life are not exactly uh, <laughs> what you think they're going to be. I remember coaching at age 45 in Florida and saying, I'll, I'll probably be finished at age 60. And I said that because my coach, Ray Graves, stopped at 52. Frank Broyles at Arkansas was 52. Daryl Royal was 52 or 3. So that, that was what you were supposed to do and said. Uh, but then all of a sudden, uh, I finished. I thought I was going to go to the Washington Redskins and finish up five or six years, and then play golf and go to the beach. And, and that didn't work out. So certainly I wanted to coach again, and Mike McGee gave me an opportunity to come to South Carolina. Uh, so I'll, I'll always be thankful for Coach McGee and, uh, and that opportunity. Yeah. Who's the toughest defender you have to game plan for? The defensive coaches, oh, uh, you know, a lot of people say who was the head coach, but usually they didn't coach the defense. Uh, it was usually the, the defensive coach had the best players. <laughs> that usually <laughs> was. So FSG was pretty tough. Uh, <clears throat> sometimes Alabama uh, was not all that tough because they, they played their same coverage as against us that they stymied everybody else with. And uh, of course, we had Ike uh, Hillier, Redell Anthony, and Jacquez Green. And you, you just can't cover those guys one on one. Uh, so. If they ran the same defense, we, we generally had pretty good success. Um, but usually, uh, yeah, just teams with the best players. Steve, obviously Shane's in his first year as a head coach. What do you remember about maybe your first year at Duke as a head coach? And what, is, what are the things that you learned that, you know, maybe you Well, I coached in the USFL uh, for three years, uh, 18 games a year, <laughs> and uh, took three preseason games. So, uh, so I was a uh, pretty veteran, I guess. So, my first year at Duke, uh, 87. But uh, uh, my first game in the USFL, I, I basically was almost always like an offensive coordinator that also was the head coach. And uh, so, you know, where to punt, go for it, or onside kick, or something like that. But generally, I let the defensive coaches run the defense completely. And uh, in hindsight, I think I should have looked in more on defense. So, <laughs> but anyway. That's just the way I did it. I tried to talk to the, well, became a head coach. I talked to the entire team the way I talked to the offense when I was an offensive coordinator, pretty much. Yeah, that was it. You ever miss the swamp coach? Oh, I go there every now and then. Yeah, I'm lucky they put my name on the stadium. So I'm, <laughs> I'm honored there also. And uh, I think we, we got a good team at Florida this year. Got to beat Georgia, got to beat Alabama. So, but Georgia would be the, the key game probably to win the East right now. Who knows by the time the games come? Who knows? So, anyway.